What's up, YouTube? It's Eric, a Lions fan. Thanks for clicking on this video. I look like hell this morning because I just woke up not too long ago. Today is January 7th of 2019. Today we're going to talk about Michigan football and their kind of their season analysis, at least kind of what I think on it. It's much, pretty much more or less just a, a season end blog for me. Uh, but before I get to that, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification so you guys get more videos just like this one. I want to give a couple shout outs out. Uh, from the Michigan guys, uh, Michigan 1777. I want to I want to shout out Steve Deuce. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Or D Steve Deuce from the Michigan podcast. Uh, a lot. If you guys want to watch some very honest, constructive criticism uh, for the season, and go watch him. I'll put his link down in the video description if you guys want to see that um, his kind of season and analysis for Michigan football. But kind of a lot of what I'm going to say. And he's kind of already said, so we're kind of in a, a lot of it in agreement of what he said. I like his content over there. Um, he just does a great job over there. I, I like all the stuff that he's got going on over there, and I, I watch his content pretty good. So I don't know if he'll come across this video, but if he does, uh, you do a damn good job, Steve. Keep up the good work. Uh, I also want to shout out Man Beast Morris, Everything King, East Warren LB, Through and Three JMO, You Should Know One. Uh, Derek P. Fields, goodness, who else is there? Um, through and three Hitman, all those guys. Uh, the the Michigan Detroit scene. Uh, I'm not sure who else kind of does. There's one other person on here I can't remember, but he does. Looks like he does it from his basement, from his couch. I can't remember who he is. I'm shouting him out. Uh, I'll get you on the next one. What your uh, what the channel name is? But if anybody wants to find out uh, more Detroit Lions football, maybe some Pistons content, Michigan football on here and he possibly some even michigan state football go ahead and check those guys out so i want to get in here get this done uh because i got to get ready to get going here for work but the michigan again michigan football ends up kind of in a disappointing year and really 10 and 3 really shouldn't be a disappointing year for michigan football but to begin the year we had that bad loss to Notre dame at least to me it was a bad loss it was it was worse than kind of what the score predicted. I can't remember what it was. It maybe it doesn't really matter what the score was, and I'm not going to go back here to try to find what the score was here either. But we had a, a loss to Notre Dame, a loss to Ohio State, which we'll get to in a minute, and a loss to Florida in the Peach Bowl, which um, last couple of weeks ago, probably two weeks ago, I already did a uh, a pod, kind of a little podcast or maybe some a little vlog about that. Um. Jim Harbaugh, I think, really needs to let go of the reins on the offense. I still kind of think that he goes towards the Bo Schembechler type of offense where it's kind of that the Michigan kind of old football mentality of run the football, run the football, run the football, and we're going to run the football, and you and the defense is going to try and stop us. Well, a couple of people have stopped us. It's kind of evolved into the West Coast kind of offense, a lot like with pro football where <clears throat> it's a lot of passing. And I know Jim, it, it, it kind of acts like to me that Jim has kind of stuck back in the 80s, maybe some early 90s where, hey, we're going to win this football game by running the football. Well, now you cannot do that anymore. You cannot specifically or make that your game plan to run the football because you may do it against maybe lesser teams like the Indianas, the Michigan States, the Northwesterns, Purdue's, uh, Nebraska's, that kind of teams. You could probably do that to those kind of teams. But when you get up in the upper echelon, like we've seen with Notre Dame, Florida, and Ohio State, that formula is not going to work and it's not going to happen. So I think that Jim kind of needs to get an offensive coordinator. And they're much like I, like I said in my uh, vlog with the Detroit Lions. They kind of have to let those reins kind of go and let the offensive coordinator and let the quarterback with his uh, Shea Patterson is going to have to kind of use his feet and use his football smarts to make the right play. Let him have a little bit more free reign, unless they think they can't, unless they think Shea Patterson can't have that kind of free reign. I kind of think that he can get the job done. I think he's a mobile enough quarterback to get it done. I think he's he just needs to have more confidence in his throws and more confidence into the player that he wants to go towards. I think that's all it is, but when you have – 17, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old 20, kids trying to play 
top tier college football, you know, you're like, sometimes their confidence is going to get a little bit shaken because now they're going up against their peers, what they which have them um, the same talent level. I didn't want to kind of get into the the specifics of players, but I guess that's kind of where the where the kind of the video has gone here. But and it kind of the same thing with Don Brown. Don Brown to me, he relies too much on man-to-man -man coverage and he's not he doesn't want to really go away from that well look what it's done to us and it got us exposed in it got us exposed in the notre dame game it got us exposed in ohio state and it got us exposed in florida again more of the top level echelon teams seem to figure out don brown's kind of his scheme and whatnot now is the time to say if we're gonna if, if michigan football is really gonna kind of contend for the Big Ten championship and possibly contend for the college football playoff. And hopefully the lofty goal is a national championship. We're going to have to make concessions here. We can't be playing man coverage all the time. We're going to have to maybe drop into some zone every once in a while, maybe do a zone blitz, all that sort of stuff. I mean, you kind of got to mix it up to make the offense guess and try, try to figure out what you're doing. If you're going to play man all the time, you're going to get exposed. That's 62 to 39 loss to Ohio State should have never have happened and they really honestly probably could have put 70 plus points on us but Urban Meyer didn't really want to run up the score I think 62 points drove <coughs> drove the home drove the point home against a number one defense which it's not the number one defense anymore but you, you kind of know a, what a theme is kind of going on here the coaching staff has to let the reins go and kind of be a little bit more flexible and maybe on the fly a little bit more especially on the defensive side of the ball Don Brown I think he's too good of a coach not to I don't want to put this he's too good of a coach not to change I just think maybe it's just stubbornness on both Jim Harbaugh on the offensive side of the ball and Don Brown on the defensive side of the ball they don't want to change that mentality because why change what works kind of thing we're getting 10 wins at nine 10 wins a season why do we want to change what we've already done well, if you want to play the Alabamas and the Clemsons and the Georgias, and I'll just get my, the Ohio States, the Floridas, LSUs, you know, that sort of team, those upper echelon teams, you're going to have to evolve and you're going to have to um, make the right adjustments, which I don't think they made the right adjustments either all throughout the season. Excuse me. I mean, they kind of, like with the Indiana team, that Indiana team is an up-and-coming team. That team could... Uh, bounce Michigan I'm gonna say two year two so but I, I just think they just really need to uh, make the right adjustments too I think we made the wrong adjustments in the Ohio State and in the Florida game that made us and there was some other stuff that happened in the Florida game don't get me wrong with that contributed to our loss but if, if and I feel like I'm, I'm beating a dead horse like I was in the Detroit Lions video the coaching staff needs to lighten the reins up and be more flexible. That's pretty much all it boils down to here, guys. I mean, if they're not willing to do that, if Jim Harbaugh is willing to do the, the old 80s Bo Schimbeckler run the ball down their throat and the defense is going to try to stop us, we're just going to continue being this 10, 9 to 10 win uh, season and with no college football and no Big Ten championship. That's all it really boils down to. And if Michigan really wants to take that next step, and take compete with the Ohio State for the Big Ten Championship, the AD for Michigan football has got to tell him that. Tell Jim Harbaugh that and tell Don Brown that. To be like, look, you guys have got to loosen the range. You got to be more flexible to make to get us to where we want to go. Because it's been, I can't even remember the last time Michigan won a Big Ten championship. Probably the when Lloyd Carr was here, but probably back in 2007. I gotta, I gotta say, when last time, I don't even know if we even won the Big Ten championship that year. But you guys kind of know what I'm getting at here. I don't want to really. I, I think I've beat that horse to death here right now. So I'm gonna kind of go on here. Uh, some of the players here: Higdon, Bush, and Gary. To me, I understand why they got out of the. Um, the they want to go to the NFL draft. They want to save their bodies. They didn't think the game was. Um, a big enough spotlight for them to do that or kind of whatever the case may be. But still, if you're going to put, there's no player that's better than the team, okay? I'm I'm just going to say that. Winovich is an example of that. He very well could have said, you know what, I'm going to stay out the game, stay out of the Peach Bowl against Florida because I want to go 
to the NFL here too. But he decided not to do that. He decided to play the game. And I wish Bush, Higdon, and Gary also did the same thing because I think maybe we would have came out with a win in Atlanta instead of a loss. But that's they, they, there's their own reasons for that, and I, that's a whole other separate video for that. I don't want to get into that here much. I do think we we get the four and five star recruits. Now we got to put those their talents to use and their talents to the best use of our uh, ability too. Like I said, you can't be having four or five star recruits that are pat that are geared towards passing if you're going to run the football. You can't you can't do that. But again, I don't want to go down that. We've already beat that horse down here a little bit. Um, what else am I going to say about uh, Michigan football? Indiana is an up-and-coming team. Northwestern, I think, is an up-and-coming team. They made it to the Big Ten Championship. Now, granted, they're in the kind of the western side of the division. It's not that great. I don't like how the divisions are done here either, but I know the Big Ten is trying to be um, forward-thinking and whatnot and make sure that their um, their conference is relevant in the Big Ten or the national uh, discussion. Those teams, if Michigan plays them, and if they continue down this road of, you know, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, they're going to leapfrog Michigan. I'm just going to say they're going to leapfrog them if they're not, if Jim Harbaugh and Don Brown don't get their crap together. Um, what does the future hold for Michigan? I'm going to kind of wrap it up here because we're going on 12 minutes. At least that's what it says right now. I don't know how weird it's going to be when we're all done and editing it. Where does the future hold for Michigan? Well, if they're true to their if we get do get to see kind of lightening the reins, uh, being better at adjustments, uh, playing more on the defensive side of the ball, playing more zone, kind of mixing in the zone coverages and whatnot, I think Michigan can probably uh, defeat Ohio State now with Urban Meyer being gone. It's probably going to get a little bit easier. That was a gift to Michigan, I think. But you don't know who the next – I don't honestly don't know who the next coach is going to be over there. And, frankly, I don't care being a Michigan fan. All I care about is being beating Ohio State. But maybe that gets us to the Big Ten championship game. And maybe we win the Big Ten championship game. And maybe we get into the college football playoff. But is that going to be good enough for Michigan fans? To me, it's not going to be good enough for us. If we're going to sit here as Michigan, as Michigan fans and be like, look, it's either a national championship for us or the season's unsuccessful, then we've got a lot of work to do, even past the Jim Harbaugh and 10 win, 9, 10, 11 win seasons. There is a lot to have to do to beat the Clemsons, the Georgias, the Alabamas, uh, Oklahoma. I, I think if Michigan played Oklahoma, they'd get spanked, personally. Um, I think we have to beat Notre Dame. That's our first goal we have to do. We have to beat Notre Dame and beat them convincingly. If we can't do that, we should not be in the national championship discussion. So let's just put it put it out there right now. If we cannot be oh, um, Notre Dame, this team is you, you might as well just kind of kiss our season goodbye for a national championship because that's we're going to probably at, at best do a Big Ten championship and not get into the college football playoff. We have to be our rival in South Bend because Michigan is a rival of Notre Dame. Even though that kind of rivalry's kind of kind of went down to the uh, went down into the crapper here, all of what's happened in the past. So, and we also have to beat Ohio State if we want to be in, also into that national championship picture. And it's going to have to get us to the Big Ten championship. We have to beat Ohio State and beat them on a consistent basis. Now, I'm not saying on the big role that we've gone on that the Ohio State's been on, no, but we have to beat them at least half the time to make ourselves relevant. Okay, we know Ohio State's Ohio State. They're they're a damn good team. So, guys, I know I kind of rambled on here a little bit, but the biggest parts of the the biggest parts of the video that I kind of want to get you into, if you've got into this far into the video, is Jim Harbaugh and Don Brown have to have the reins loosened. We have to be better at <laughs> we we got to get better at overall play calling, loosen the reins a little bit, be more aggressive on our adjustments make the right adjustments, not play man all the time, all that good stuff. And Jim's got to have – get an offensive coordinator in there that can help the team and just Jim be the manager. That's pretty much all it is. We have to 
I think our development of players is pretty good, but we got to make them say, look, if you want to, if you, if you want to take the Michigan program to the next level, no matter if you're a freshman or a senior, you're going to play in a bowl game. That's another thing that has to happen for us. We have to beat the Notre Dames. We have to beat the Ohio States to get us into that national championship picture and to get us into the big 10, uh, win the division and get us into the big 10 championship game. And that's pretty much, I don't think there's really a whole lot to change. But to get to that level, there's quite a bit to change. I mean, there's three things, but I'm sure there's other stuff that has to happen behind the scenes to get us to that point. Can Michigan get there? Yes, I think Michigan can get there. But it's got to come to Don Brown and to Jim Harbaugh loosening the reins. That's pretty much the gist of it here. Like I said, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you guys get more videos just like this one. And I want to say... Go watch the Michigan podcast by uh, Jim D or Jim, excuse me, Steve Dees. If you guys want an honest, constructive criticism of Jim Harbaugh, you got to watch him. He's a damn good podcaster, and I always enjoy his content. All right, guys, I'm gonna get going here. It's six thirty now. I got to get ready for work. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video, and hope to see you guys again soon. Deuces. Take care, guys.